Hi everyone, it's Tom Griffin, your favorite film critic, and you're watching the Armchair Auteur. This is a video series I do where we talk about new movies, old movies, screenplay analysis, television series reviews, that sort of thing. So if you like movies, and you like movie adjacent popular culture, and you like to see somebody pick those things apart, you're in the right place and you should consider subscribing. Today we're talking about the new John Hamm film, Confess Fletch, a film Twitter user Dave Kerr called a nice little movie. And I agree with him. That is the highest praise I think you can give a movie these days. And I'll get into why in a minute. The same day I saw Confess Fletch, I finally got around to checking out Top Gun Maverick, a movie that has been pulling in crowds at my day job for four straight months. Something not even Spider-Man No Way Home could do. It's obviously a great flick, somehow better than the original, and also maybe a few short and curlers away from being the actual best of the year thus far. All hail the last true movie star. But seeing John Hamm pop up as Cyclone, I remembered hearing my friend Justin Davis, co-host of The Black Print on Amp Radio, ask what the fuck was going on with this man's career. One minute he's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with TC to the tune of $600 million domestic, then he's getting curved by flow from Progressive, and not one, not two, but at least three different TV spots? Don Draper for Progressive. What are we doing here? But I will cut our man some slack. The thing is, as an actor, it is very difficult to find really good roles after you've had the perfect role, especially in a television role. James Gandolfini, God rest his soul, was the perfect man to play Tony Soprano. And when The Sopranos ran its course, he had a few really good supporting turns in other works, but they couldn't compare. Look at Brian Cranston post Breaking Bad. Have you ever even watched this show where he's a judge? Is it even real? Don Draper was such a perfect role for Ham, and he knocked it out of the park over the course of like 100 hours. I think he can be forgiven for his comedic indulgences and the quite frankly underrated work he did in Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt because it's very unlikely for an actor to find another big role that plays to their specific strengths the way Mad Men did for Ham. Now it's not quite the perfect fit that Don Draper was, but I think John Ham has come close with Fletch. Confess Fletch features Ham as Gregory McDonald's iconic investigative journalist, I. M. Fletcher, a former reporter who repeatedly ends up at the center of unique little mysteries. If the name sounds familiar to you, it's most likely because of Chevy Chase's two infamous outings with the character, 1985's Fletch, and its 1988 sequel, Fletch Lives. Now, loads of people have been trying to make a new Fletch movie for the last 30 years. Kevin Smith spent years in development hell trying to adapt Fletch 1, a prequel book that could serve as an origin story and reboot for the character. But he wanted Jason Lee to play Fletch, while Harvey Weinstein wanted Ben Affleck or Will Smith. Later, Scrubs creator Bill Lawrence came close to doing the same with Zach Braff at the helm, but the towering nature of Chase's performance in the first Fletch spooked Braff too much to follow through. Fletch is special for a lot of folks for the same reason other 80s comedies are, but I've never been a fan. I was a little Kevin Smith sycophant when I was in high school, so when I found out he was trying to make a Fletch movie, I went to the library and I read all of Gregor McDonald's actual books before I ever saw the Chevy Chase version. So by the time I did, I kinda hated it. Fletch the movie is a broad comedy that happens to have mystery elements. But the Fletch books are mysteries that happen to be kind of funny. For decades, people have tried to adapt these books as big mainstream comedies because of Chevy Chase, uh, which is why people want like Ryan Reynolds to play Fletch or whatever. But Greg Matola, director of Superbad, teamed up with John Hamm to adapt Confess Fletch, which is the second book in the series, and together, the two figured out how to strike exactly the right balance between the two genres. It's a movie that you can market as a comedy just fine, because it is funny, but it's also an extremely effective mystery thriller. Uh, it doesn't make any actual references to the original Chevy Chase movie. Uh, th there's a couple of like lines of dialogue lifted from the movie that like people who are like hardcore nerds will recognize. Um, but even though the book it's based on is a direct sequel to the first Fletch, it doesn't really make any references to the original first book either. Instead, the movie begins just as the book does, with Fletch arriving to a room he is staying at and finding a woman dead before calling the police. Not 911, just a police station. Well, this isn't the murder department. Can you just tell Homicide? It's a great introduction to the character, a somewhat snarky but very intelligent ne'er-do-well with a background that allows him to blend in around stuffy rich people, but a disposition that makes him want to fuck with them all relentlessly. Fletch, an LA native, is in Boston staying in an Airbnb at the behest of his new girlfriend, a rich Italian woman whose father has been kidnapped and whose paintings have been stolen. Their search for his stolen paintings, required for the ransom to free him, brings Fletch in his omnipresent Lakers cap to the city of the Celtics, where he is now the most obvious suspect in a murder 
pitting him against Roy Woods Jr. as Inspector Detective Monroe. Now, he's actually playing Inspector Flynn, who's sort of a foil for Fletch in the books, uh, so much so that he ends up getting his own, like, spin-off series of novels where Flynn solves mysteries as, like, a really fun character. Due to rights issues and stuff, uh, he can't be called Flynn, but, like, he's written to, to, it's Flynn. He's basically Flynn. So the thrust of the film, like most neo-noirs, sees Fletch trying to solve two cases at once. The location of these missing paintings, and who killed this lady so he doesn't have to go to jail. I won't get into the machinations of the plot, because the central mysteries are pretty well adapted to the screen and best experienced firsthand, but I was extremely impressed with how close the film came to the general tone of McDonald's prose, and how seamlessly they updated a novel set in the mid-70s to present day. There's obviously some narrative changes, and not everything is one-to-one, -one, at least to my teenage recollection of the book, but I was so impressed with Ham's portrayal of Fletch. He's funny, he's charming, he makes up fake names and has a lot of weird quirks, but he never feels like a cartoon character the way Chevy would by Fletch Lives. Ham's got great chemistry with the whole cast, especially Woods, but also Marcia Gay Harden as his new girlfriend's stepmother, and fellow Mad Men vet John Slattery as Frank, Fletcher's longtime editor. Stylistically, too, the film's straightforward visuals, tasteful color palette, and jazzy score all come together to create something that felt made entirely for me. I know I have a tendency to complain on this channel, about the same like three or four things like all the time about how movies used to be like this ding, ding. <laughs> but now movies are like this <laughs> but confess fletch really does feel like a throwback in all the best possible ways under 100 minutes features a great cast of characters, has a budget that's not so astronomical that you'd have to make a billion dollars to actually break even. I know we all said this about Shane Black's The Nice Guys and continue to say it, quite frankly, all the time, but I really wish they made one of these every year. Like, there's like 10 or so Fletch books. You could make a movie like this a year until John Hamm is too old to play Fletch. Uh, like, you could do that. And then when you get to that point, you could just start over with Fletch 1 and Fletch 2, the two prequel books that form his, like, origin, uh, with the younger actor if you wanted to. Like, Fletch is such a cool character. I love these mysteries. I love how funny they are. I love how, like, peculiar they are, but that they're not so comedic that the actual drama of the noir, like, doesn't work. Like, it's, it's, it's such a unique balance, and it's such good shit. Ham allegedly took a significant salary cut to get the production more shooting days so they could more effectively make this a movie that is good. And I really hope that investment pays off for him. Like, I hope that him sort of betting on himself and on this property and on the idea of being able to make movies like this be a genuine prospect again, I hope that it works out. And I don't know anything about, like, the VOD market, so I don't know how many on demands it takes to make this like a, a good value proposition, but I hope it hits whatever that mark is. I hope that enough people check out the movie and watch it and pay for it and rent it on Amazon or whatever it takes to get another one. Um, Greg Matold, I guess, has said that he has been approached to do Fletch's Fortune, the next book in the series, as a movie, but he's not sure if he wants to do it. Greg Matola, if you happen to be watching this, please do it. Like, for me, like, I... I, I need this. <laughs> I literally fucking crave movies exactly in this vein. And there's so many movies like this from like the 70s and 80s and 90s uh, that I could go back and watch or rewatch or what have you. But it would be cool if we got new ones too. It would be cool if actors got to be in movies like this because not everyone can go get like a, a picture perfect prestige drama to, to, to be the lead actor of, right? A lot of really good actors, the best thing for them is nice little movies like this. And the best thing for us sometimes is nice little movies like this. There is nothing better than being at home. I mean, going to a theater for something like this is nice too, but there's nothing better than when you're at home and you throw in a movie and it's less than two hours long and it's like a delightful little thing unto itself. And you watch it and it feels really good that's great. Like, the only thing better than a nice little movie like Confess Fletch is like if there's four more and you can like watch them all in a row. You know, it's, I just really want more of these. Uh, even if it means that John Hamm has to continue making progressive commercials to afford to do them. Okay, those are my feelings about Confess Fletch. Uh, I think it's a really good movie. I think everyone should go see it. It's been a while since I've seen something that I really hardcore wanted to recommend to a lot of people. Uh, and I realize this movie is like very like specifically at like the crossroads of what I like from movies. But if you've watched enough of my channel to know what my taste is like, I think that if we overlap enough, I think you'll feel the same way too. I think you'll really dig it. I think, 
I think I'm gonna like not shut the fuck up about Confess Fledge for like a long time now. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you loved it, subscribe so you can see more content like this in the future. Uh, if you have any thoughts about the movie or about John Hamm or about Fletch or anything like that, uh, share them in the comments below. I'll respond when I have time. I love talking to you guys. I believe we'll have another video out pretty soon. Uh, yeah, so thank you guys for watching. I hope everyone's doing well, staying safe, being good to yourselves and each other. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.